Hi there. Have you ever wondered how taxation works on corporations? Don't worry. That's what Chapter 12 is about. Income Taxation in Corporation In taxation, corporation includes joint stock companies, joint account association and insurance companies or partnerships. For income tax purposes however corporation does not include general professional partnership and joint venture or consortium. For example, in petroleum and coal. There are two kinds of corporate taxpayers. Domestic and foreign corporation. Domestic corporations are organized and are existing under Philippine law. It includes government-owned and controlled corporations. They are taxable in all income from sources outside or within the country. Foreign corporation on the other hand, exists under laws of foreign countries, and are taxable only in income from within the Philippines. Moreover, foreign corporation may be a resident or non-resident. Resident foreign corporation establishes a branch in the Philippines of doing business or trade. Non-resident foreign corporation does not engage in business or trade in the country. They earn from fixed income such as from interest, dividend, rents, salaries, premiums and annuities. Domestic corporations are taxed 30% on taxable income and 2% on gross income. The same rate for resident foreign corporation and only 2% taxable gross income for non-resident. Some corporations like government educational institutions non-profit labor or agricultural organizations religious corporation, associations of farmers, and charitable organizations are exempted from tax. There are five kinds of income taxes in corporations, the NCIT, MCIT, OGIT, capital gains and final tax. Normal corporate income tax. It has a tax rate of 30%. Minimum corporate income tax has 2% tax rate on gross income. Excess of MCIT over NCIT shall be carried forward and credited against normal tax for three years. Excess MCIT shall be recorded as deferred changes in the corporate books. A taxpayer is liable to MCIT at the same time as expanding withholding tax may deduct EWT from MCIT if there is an excess EWT it may be credited or refunded. Revenue Regulation No. 12 2007 states that quarterly income tax of domestic corporation shall be paid on quarterly payment. A corporation may also opt to use the optional gross income tax. In OGIT a corporation is to be taxed 15% based on their gross income. But in order to use this, the corporation should satisfy the following conditions. First, based on the GNP, a corporation should have a tax ratio of 20%. A VAT tax effort of 4%. Consolidated public sector final position ratio. Also, the income tax collection should be 40% of total tax revenues. And the cost of sale to gross sale ratio should not exceed 55%. Capital gains tax. Capital gain is the excess of value received over the determined cost from sale or exchange of capital asset. Capital gain on sales of shares of stocks not traded is taxed at 5% of capital gain, if less than 100,000. The excess of the 100,000 is then taxed at 10%, however, sales of stock not traded, the capital gain is taxed at one half of selling price. Sale, exchange, or disposition of land or building within the Philippines. The tax on the capital income of domestic and resident foreign corporation is 6% of the selling price or fair market value. Whichever is higher. For non-resident foreign, it is taxed at 30% of withholding tax. When the sale is made outside of the Philippines then only the domestic corporations are taxed at 30%. Passive Income Tax 
passive income is income earned from allowing other to use one's rights, or game of chance or investment, which the taxpayer merely waits for the income to come in. Passive income from interest of depository bank is taxed at 7.5% for domestic and resident foreign corporation. For royalties and interest on currency bank deposit, domestic and resident foreign corporation is taxed at 20%, while non-resident foreign at normal corporate income tax. For other passive income of domestic and foreign corporation, income of domestic banks are subject to final tax of 10%. This include income derived from foreign currency and interest from foreign currency loans. On the other hand income from inter-corporate dividends are exempted from tax. For other passive income of non-resident foreign corporation, interest income from foreign loans is subject to 20% final withholding tax. Tax sparing rule which is inter-corporate dividend from a domestic corporation to non-resident foreign corporation is subject to 20%. Special corporations. This includes private educational institution and non-profit hospitals government-owned corporations. Both the educational institution and hospitals are taxed at 10% of net taxable income, provided that their income from unrelated business activities should not exceed 50% of total gross income. The government-owned corporations are taxed at normal corporate income tax. Special Resident Foreign Corporations The following are types of resident foreign corporation. Let's start with the international carrier. The applicable tax rate is 2.5% of the Philippine gross billings, or the revenue from carriage and the like. Next is the offshore banking units. Taxed at 10% of the gross income. Branch remittances. Taxed at 15% of remittances. Regional Area Headquarters which is tax exempt and Regional Operating Headquarters at 10% of taxable income. Special Non-Resident Foreign Corporations This are foreign corporations or business that are based outside our country and therefore subject to different tax rates. For example, 25% for cinematographic film owner, 7.5% for machinery lesser and 4.5% for lesser of vessels chartered. On the other hand, for insurance companies, whether domestic or foreign, the net additions to reserve funds can be deducted from gross income, provided it will be treated as income in the year of release. In franchising companies, the royalties are subject to 30% regular income tax and 20% if from passive income. All corporations subject to tax except foreign corporations must submit a duplicate of quarterly ITR and final or adjustment return filed by a principal officer and sworn by treasurer. ITR of corporate dissolution or reorganization must be passed within the 30 days to the BIR commissioner after the adoption of plan. A corporation can employ either a calendar year or fiscal year. The approval from the commissioner is needed to change an accounting period annual income tax return. This contains the accumulated report of sales, cost of sales and allowable deductions for the whole taxable year, and must be filled before April 15th of succeeding year. Last is the improperly accumulated earnings tax. This applies on the family and closely held corporations. There you have it. I hope you learned something. Goodbye.